There is another way of seeing how our texture coordinates have been applied to the object. And to use this I'm going to split my view into two side-by-side -side views. And I'm going to have a perspective view in one of these. And in the second view I'm going to have the UV viewport. And what we're seeing here in the UV viewport is a representation of the values of the texture coordinates in our scene for the current object. So what we're seeing here, this is the outside of our cylinder, and this is the top and the bottom. And the top and the bottom are in exactly the same place, so we're only seeing one circle. And there are a couple of problems if we were to try and use this UV projection in a, a genuine render. And the most obvious of which is that we've got overlapping UV coordinates. So that means that this image here will overlap with bits of the image around here. So we won't be able to have a different image here than from here. It'll be the same part of the image in both places. So generally you don't want to have your texture coordinates overlapping. So what we can do, what can we do about this? Well, once our coordinates are projected, we can still move them around. And we can do that using either UV Edit or UV Transform. Let's start by doing UV Transform. And we can either select the elements that we want to move around here in the 3D view, or we can do it here in the UV view. So I want to select some primitives and I'm going to select once more all the primitives that are around the outside of our cylinder. And then I can use a UV transform like this and again use the Y key to change this. And I'm going to move this down, move it along a bit, scrump it down a bit like so. And what you ideally want to do is try and fit all of your UV coordinates into this unit square here, because your image will stretch across this unit square. Let me select the top and another UV transform. And I can move this down to here and possibly shrink it a little bit. And then finally, let's select the bottom and UV transform and move this down and place it at the bottom as well. So what we've now got is a well laid out set of UVs which do not overlap. That means that every individual point on the sphere, on the cylinder rather, could have a different part of the texture map applying to it. It can sometimes be a bit difficult to know which part of our 3D object corresponds to which part of our UV coordinate projection here. So you may want to select your components here directly. Well, let's try doing that. I can see that I can, in fact, select polygons directly. What happens if I want to select everything here that forms this island, if you like, of UV coordinates. Well, in fact, that's relatively easy. If we have a look at our selection button here and right click, we can see that there's an option Select Connected Geometry. And I'm going to select that. And also at the bottom here, there's a connectivity menu, which allows uh, me to choose how Houdini is going to judge what is connected and what isn't. And if I set this to UV, uh, then what should happen is as soon as I select any part of this island, I'll get all of that selected. Similarly here and here. I want to now demonstrate a slightly different way of creating UVs on your object. And for this I'm going to use a box. 
And this type of method of creating uh, UVs is best on box-like objects, objects that have sides which are perpendicular to each other. And the method is called UV unwrap. It's here on the text tab. So with all of my primitives forming my box selected, I can select UV unwrap. And we can see what it does is create a set of disconnected faces here in the UV view. And we can see there's an object here which has been created, a sort of guide object, which is a cube. And that's because we've set it to six planes, in other words, six sides of the box. And what's happening is that each primitive is getting a UV assignment based on comparing its normal to the normal of one of these planes. And we can change the number of planes, and you can see the object here changes according to what kind of shape we have. We can also adjust uh, the positioning of this control object, and we can see that changes the way the texture projection is done. Let me reset that. Well, let me once again add a UV quick texture to this. And I'm going to leave it with the default UV color. And one of the things we can see is that here at the edges, we get a sudden jump from one part of the texture to another. It isn't uh, continuous here. But I can change that by moving around these uh, faces here in the UV view. And I'm going to do that using a different tool this time. Instead of using UV Transform, I'm going to use UV Edit. And the difference between UV Transform and UV Edit is very similar to the difference between a Transform operation and an Edit operation when you're editing geometry. A Transform uh, just does a single operation, a single rotation or translation of, in this case, some UV points. With UV Edit, you can accumulate a set of edits in a single node, and it's much more efficient. Well, I want my UV edit to take effect before my UV quick shade, so I need to have the UV unwrap node highlighted, and then click UV edit. And what I want to do, that's S and 3 to select edges. Let's say that I want to sort out this edge here to make sure that it's continuous. Well, I've done that, selected that edge, and I can see, let's, let's go for this edge here. I can see that this edge here is part of this primitive, and it's also part of this primitive. So if I want to connect them, I'm going to have to move this primitive up here and rotate it. So let me do that. I can, instead of selecting primitives, I can select just the primitive at the bottom here. Press Enter, and that will allow me to move this primitive up here, and then to rotate it like so, so that those edges are the same. And let's select the edge again and check that that is indeed uh, the right edge. Let's have a look at uh, maybe this edge here. and We can see that's already aligned. Where does that one? That one belongs to this primitive here. So I press Enter here to activate my UV Edit node. And I need to move this, I need to select four primitives and move this one up here. And then I think I had to rotate it 180 degrees like so. Let's uh, have a look at that again. Select three, select this edge, and let's move this a little bit. Unfortunately, I've, I've misselected that one. So I need to move that back like so. And we can see that those edges are now the same. What about this edge here? That's that one. So that's probably enough for the moment. And we can see that that's now looking a little bit better. Uh, if we have a look at this uh, here, we can see that it's a little bit better. 
but it's still not uh, necessarily identical. So what I can do now is join up these UVs at these corners so that they are actually in exactly the same place. And to do that, I'm going to need to select vertices. So S to select and vertices. And then I'm going to select all of these vertices here. In fact, let me just uh, select this primitive at the bottom here and move it out of the way. And then select vertices and select these vertices here and then I'm going to use a UV fuse node so let me select that. Now what happens by default is that all of these uh, texture coordinates are fused onto the same single point and we don't actually want that but what we can do is uh, snap them to a grid and let me just increase the spacing of that so that these fuse together. I'm just doing this roughly. Clearly, uh, if you were doing it properly, you would pay a bit more attention to it. Uh, and what we should now see is around this face here that the texture is absolutely aligned. And we can see that it's continuous across uh, these edges here. Now, one of the things that it's useful to be able to do is to visualize here in the UV viewport the texture which you're applying to your object. So let's see how to do that. With my cursor over this view, I need to hit the D key, which brings up the display options. And here on the background tab, I need to choose a file which I'm going to display. And in this case, I'm going to go into the HFS Houdini pick directory, which is where the standard pictures are, and go down and pick a UV color picture. And I don't want to apply the operation to all split views because that would mean that we get the same image as a background here in our perspective view, and we don't uh, want that. So I'm going to turn that off, and we need to enable display background images like so. And I'm going to Turn off that, and we can see that our image has appeared here in this view. We've got a slight problem here because the background is so bright uh, that it's dominating uh, the image, and we can't actually see the lines of our UVs. Well, we can get around that by using uh, the option here in the display options to take in our image from a compositing operation rather than from a picture. Let me just demonstrate how we do that. So I've got a compositing network here. I'm just going to bring in a file node, select uh, image, and then I'm going to just use a brightness node to turn down, let's have a look at our Composite view, I'm going to turn down the brightness. So, turn it down quite a bit. And then uh, on our scene view, bring up our display options again and choose instead of the file, the bright node. And we should find that we have the image. It may be quite hard to see that, it's much darker. Let me just increase the brightness a little bit and I'm going to have to display it and undisplay it again to get it to reload and we can see that's a little bit brighter. Well before we move on to uh, seeing how we can adjust these UVs I just want to explain how to uh, reverse uh, the effect of a UV fuse. In other words how to pull apart UVs that are joined together. And I'm going to need to lay down another UV edit. So select all the primitives and then lay down a UV edit. And in order to pull apart uh, vertices, I'm going to need to select vertices. 
And the other thing I'm going to need to do is select this button here, Display Vertex Handles. So if I zoom in, uh, let me just make sure nothing is selected. If I zoom in, we can see that when I display Vertex Handles, we get these lines coming out from each point. And that allows me to select the different vertices which share this point. So in this case, there are three vertices sharing the point. So if I hit enter to enter edit mode, if I select this vertex, you can see that that line turns white and I can move that vertex away from the shared point. Similarly, I can move that one and I can move that one. So this allows you to change the display of the, the position rather of your vertices independently of the points which they share. Well, I don't actually uh, need uh, those vertices pulled apart, so I'm just going to delete this UV edit node. And let's zoom back out again so that we can see our UVs. Now I need to adjust these UVs for a couple of reasons, one of which is that clearly these faces have become distorted so that uh, they're not going to show the right parts of the texture. And secondly, uh, in general, you need to make sure that all of your UVs lie in this uh, box here which represents the 0 to 1 range. So that's why this texture is only displayed inside this central box. So we need to edit uh, these UVs so that they all are inside the central box. Now probably the most efficient way to do this is using a UV transform node or indeed a further UV edit. Uh, but I'm going to demonstrate a different tool in order to do this. And let's uh, turn off our vertex display. So let's again select all of our primitives. And then I'm going to select the UV brush tool. And we can see as we move our cursor over uh, the textures here, uh, we get a circle, and that represents our brush. Now, I'm not going to go into this tool into a in a great deal of detail, because there is a tutorial on the SideFX website which demonstrates it. But it has a number of uses, and the main one is to be able to drag uh, coordinates around. So you can see I can just click on any of these UVs and I can uh, drag them around. I can change the size of my brush by hitting the shift key and then dragging my mouse. So I can move my brush so that it's much larger and move many more UVs at once. Let's uh, move it right out. And we can see that as I do that, the display on the right hand side is updating. And I can choose the functions which my brush performs by using the right mouse key. But first of all, let me shift and reduce the size of my brush. And if I uh, right mouse click, I can see that I can choose my left mouse operation and my middle mouse operation. My left mouse operation is set to drag, and my middle mouse is also set to drag. Now, you'll notice uh, that there's an operation selector here. But if I turn this to, for example, dilate, contract, and then click, it reverts to drag. You need to set the operation of your brush here by right-clicking. So what I'm going to do is set uh, my operation for both the middle and the left to contract and dilate. So that means that the right mouse button tends to force UVs apart from each other, like so. And the middle mouse button tends to bring them back together like so. And we can see that quite clearly. I can also set uh, this to smooth. And in general, you want uh, the right mouse button, sorry, the left mouse button to be on drag, and the middle mouse button to be on smooth. So smooth tends to smooth out any changes that you've made, and even out the UVs. And I can move these in so that they're a bit closer in. And then if I smooth, we can see that it tends to smooth out those changes. 
So you can use the UV brush to adjust your UVs in quite a subtle way uh, relatively uh, quickly. Well, I've adjusted these UVs using UV transform now so that they're inside the, the unit box here. What happens if I wanted to export uh, this UV uh, mapping to a paint program so that I could, for example, paint over it and then use that uh, picture as the texture uh, to apply to a cube? Well, uh, at any on any node, I can right-click and I can select Save Texture UV to Image. So in this case, I'm going to save it out to my home folder and I'm going to call it texture uv.pick and we probably want a slightly larger resolution and we can accept that and then I can import the image like so and we can see that we get within our compositing network uh, an imported file and we can see that that contains uh, UVs and you could then uh, on a, in a painting program paint over this and use that as your texture. Well I'm going to demonstrate now a slightly more complicated example and to do so I'm going to model a bottle. So let's move to by hitting space and three the sideways view and let me turn on snapping to grid and then I'm going to draw a curve and I'm going to start here at the origin and then I'm going to draw a couple of points like this uh, and I'll demonstrate what I'm doing later on and then I'm going to move back to here and uh, in fact we can turn off snapping now I'm going to go up like this and start to sort of model uh, the top of a bottle. I'm going to give it a little extended top like this and then I'm going to go down and model the inside of our bottle like so and I'm just doing this roughly and I want to end uh, on at a zero point here so I'm going to turn back on snapping and I'm going to move my point to here and then right click and stop building curve. Uh, and I broadly got uh, a bottle shape. And I'm now going to edit uh, those points. So let me start by hitting select S and 2 for points. And first of all, I'm going to move these points. I select them, hit T for translate, you automatically get an edit node here. And I'm going to move those across. I'm then going to move these points in the opposite direction. We've still got snapping on, that's what's uh, going wrong. Like so. Maybe move this point in a bit. And this one I'm going to move up, down rather. And this one I can select it. Now I know this is on a grid point, And providing I just use this arrow here, I'm going to ensure that uh, the X coordinate of this remains at zero. Let me also move uh, this one down. And here I'm going to move this one along. Let me control Z. I need to move that one along like this to ensure that its uh, Y coordinate is still zero. And this one here, similarly along to say here, and this one along to directly below that. So that's broadly got a bottle shape. Now, uh, the other thing I'm going to do is select this point in the middle and then uh, increase my soft radius. And let's just uh, reduce that a little bit so that we get this uh, indent in the bottom of our bottle. And now if I add a revolve sop, what we should see is something, let me space key in one to move back to the perspective view, turn off the display of points. 
and we should see uh, that we've got something that looks relatively like a bottle. 